All right. Um, so, uh, what we're going to talk about today, I'm just going to give you a kind of a quick overview. So, we're not actually going to teach you how to make zines today, although that would be super fun. Uh, what we're going to talk about is, is the Olympia Zine Fest, um, which has been going on for five years now. Um, we're going to kind of briefly explain the concepts of zines and zine fests. Um, we're going to talk about the Olympia Zine Fest and all of its moving parts, which there are a lot of. Um, we're going to talk about future Olympia Zine Fests, and then we're going to take time for questions. And then, um, okay, next slide. Okay, this is where we introduce ourselves. Um, so I'm Aggie Burstein, one of the co-founders of the Zine Fest. My pronouns are they, them. And that's all you really need to know. Here's Kelsey. That's not true. <laughs> Aggie works at the Olympia Library and is super awesome and manages the zine collection there. And yeah, and we'll talk about that wonderful. for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, and my name is Kelsey Smith. Um, I use she, her pronouns. I work at the Lacey Timberland Library for my day job. Um, my... Uh, unpaid work is the Olympia Zine Fest, and then I also um, help run um, Community Print, which is a community letterpress print shop here in town. Um, and I do lots of other things. I have a grown daughter, Cleo, who's going to be having a birthday real soon here. Okay. And we're both wearing our Zine Fest shirts from, mine from, from 2015, year. the first year. <laughs> And we didn't discuss that ahead of time. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Okay. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. So this is me. Um, raise your hand if you know what a zine is. <laughs> I don't know how to see everybody, but do most people know what a zine is? Okay. A lot of you. So there's a lot of text on this page that you can read. <laughs> I don't know how much to get into it. It does seem like people who came today are familiar with the concept. If anyone wants more, maybe we'll do another one of these just about scenes themselves and how, how you make them and how you get them out there. Um, but does anyone maybe just speak now? Confused. Okay. The one thing that I did want to highlight is that fourth point um, and the fact that zines are now um, a lot. Um, this is kind of a new trend with zines. They're being used as like a visual arts medium. <clears throat> so for a long time, zines, like when zines were first um, being created, they were cre created, um, they were pretty text heavy and they started out as fan zines. Um, and a lot of them had to do with uh, science fiction, literature. Um, they were very literature um, and writing oriented. And now a lot of, um, a lot of uh, visual artists are kind of seizing that, seizing that and using it as a medium. So the um, line between zines and comics and zines and artist books are kind of, it's getting a little blurry. Um, which makes it interesting when we are hosting a zine fest and trying to keep it pretty zine oriented. So very cool. And here's a wall of zines if you want to see some. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> There's another one over there. <laughs> I like Stop. the way those are displayed. <laughs> so okay. we can Bye. move on to zine fest. So what's a zine fest then? Has anyone ever been to a zine fest? I'm looking at all of you. I see some nods. No. <laughs> Not sure I see any yeses. Okay. That's good. I'm yeah. Fine. We're talking to the right people. <laughs> cool. So can we go to the next slide, please? Yay. Okay. So zine fest. They're popping up in, all, in almost every major city at this point. Um, some are, have been going on a long time. Ours, like we said, has been about, we've had five, so five years. But they're basically generally a community event 
usually more than one day, like a weekend, um, that celebrates zines and DIY culture with different events. Usually the main event is a tabling expo. So people who make zines sit at a table and attendees will walk around and purchase their zines or look at them and meet people that way. And then in addition to the tabling, there's usually side events like workshops, readings, music, etc. cetera. Um, so that's generally the concept of a zine fest and they're usually free to attend. Anything you would add, Kelsey? Um, I, I looked up a little bit of statistics, and um, right now there's over 100 zine and small press festivals, and I counted 34 states, and then they're international as well. Um, so they, so they, are, um, they happen a lot. And then yeah. the pictures um, that Aggie has on this slide show some of, the, some of the ones that are kind of a little bit more in this area. Um, some, some like, there's also the Olympia Comics Festival, which is like uh, small press comics and indie comics. Um, so the line between comics and zines, again, is pretty, it's, it's narrowing. Uh, but Spokane started a zine fest recently. Portland Zine Symposium has been going on for, gosh, I think it's almost, I think it's in its like 15th year. Somewhere around there. Yeah, it's been going on for a long time. And then another one um, that's worth um, checking out is Short Run, which is kind of more comic oriented. And that's in Seattle and it's enormous and kind of overwhelming. Um, <laughs> our, our fest is a little smaller and more intimate, and we kind of yes. like it that way. So. And if anyone it reminds me to say that if anyone has been to the Comics Fest, the Olympia Comics Fest, it's in the same place. The tables are pretty much oriented the same way. So just imagine that, but with zines instead of comics. All okay. right. Next slide. Go to the next slide. Thanks. Oh. Okay. So that's the design for the very first um, year t-shirt, which Aggie and I are both wearing. Yeah. Um, and uh, basically the, um, the zine fest started, um, we, we had a meeting, um, well, where it really started was um, Sage Adderley, um, who is a local um, Olympia resident creative author, um, makes zines, runs a zine distro called Sweet Candy Distro, uh, where she sells zines made by other people. Um, she and I got together for coffee one day and we were super caffeinated and Sage was like, we should have a zine fest! And I was like, yeah! Um, but we didn't really think about the amount of work that it was going to be, so we, we learned um, a lot along the way. Um, we had our first meeting in summer of 2014, and we um, just promoted it to anyone that might be interested in helping us organize. Um, we had it at Percival Landing, which was a kind of a funny place to have it. Uh, of the 10 people who attended that very first meeting, six of us are still involved with the Zine Fest, and three of us are still currently organizing. Um, Oh, and this picture on the right is um, an article from the Olympian where they highlighted, I think it was our first year, uh, mm -hmm. we got a big newspaper article. That was very exciting. And maybe Alex, Alec might have had something to do with that. I can't remember. Um, so thank you, Alec. Uh, so we ended up having the first year's fest in 2015. We didn't have any money to um, rent the Olympia Center, and it is fairly expensive. So we uh, had a Kickstarter to raise the money to um, rent the Olympia Center. And when we had that Kickstarter, part of the Kickstarter was to sell tables um, as rewards. Uh, that was, we, we learned a lot about what to do and what not to do that first year. It was kind of, that was kind of a stressful um, situation, but we did, we did reach our funding goal um, and we, we had the fest. And that first year it was in October of 2015. Um, and we'll talk more about the dates in the, in the, later on in the presentation. 
Um, there's usually between five and nine organizers. Right now we're at six organizers. Uh, and let me scroll down in my notes. Yeah, there we go. Um, the Zine Fest is organized by a non-hierarchical core group of volunteers. Um, our intentions are to spread the love of zines as an accessible form of creative expression, strengthen community partnerships through outreach and collaboration, prioritize and amplify the voices of underrepresented communities, operate and make decisions from an anti-oppression framework, and highlight Olympia as a destination with a diverse creative culture and history. That's it. Next slide. Yeah, and Kelsey just read out loud um, kind of our mission and values that we all wrote together um, about a year ago. It took a long time. Yeah, <laughs> we finally got it down. What are we doing? <laughs> okay, so this is um, a picture of organizers, past and present. So I guess I'll name the current organizers, which is me, Aggie, Kelsey, and then we have Nikki, who's been with us from the very beginning, and who a few years ago moved to Spokane, but still organizes the fest with us. Um, this is at all the meetings, but just like you are, kind of over video chat. So it's me, Kelsey, Nikki, and then we have newer organizers, Signe and Summer, and then Melanie, who's I think been with us for all but the first year. So. Mm -hmm. That's all of us right now. We can Big shout move out on. to Melanie who works in the culinary. Um, yeah. I'm at SPSCC. Woo. Very she's, cool. She's uh, she's on the um, on the cell phone screen in the button picture because she wasn't there. So right. we all <laughs> pictures of her. <laughs> um, cool. Okay. So this is kind of an overview of the of the weekend. Um, basically, the the short version of this is that we usually have a Friday night event at the library. I think we've done that slide. every year. Yeah, thanks. Um, we do a Saturday Expo at the Olympia Center. You don't have to go further yet. We're going to kind of go into detail about these. So the Expo is kind of all day. Saturday workshops. A Saturday evening show or reading, um, a Sunday zine brunch. Sometimes we do some workshops on Sundays and sometimes not. We're trying to figure out, we're always trying to figure out the best way to deal with that. Um, and then a couple of years, the library has hosted a zine librarians unconference on Monday um, for people who are interested in the intersection of zines and libraries in all forms. Okay, and now Aggie's going to talk about the kickoff of it. Okay, great. So yeah, every year since the beginning, we've kicked it off at the library um, Friday night. So we've had a couple different things. I think the first year we had a forum, like a Q&A with some famous zinesters. And the second year we had a music concert. And then I think it was the third year that we realized people weren't coming to the Friday night event because they were busy procrastinating and finishing their zines for Saturday, which is the big tabling expo. So we had the idea that to make Friday night more of a come together and we'll finish your zines using library resources like the copier, stapler, and all of that. And so that's been really successful. People come and either start something new or finish things up. Um, and then we have a casual event like an open mic that's kind of going on and off or a DJ or something like that and call it the Zenithon. Mm -hmm. um, so that's worked pretty well and we'll talk more about how the library is kind of a partner for Zine Fist later in the, in the presentation but that's the Friday night event. And sometimes when we're doing the Zenithon we also have like we'll have like one band um, so sure, that yeah. is um, Spider and the Webs, um, featuring Toby Vale from B Bikini Kill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, okay, next slide. Okay, this is a picture of the Tabling Expo. Um, the Tabling Expo is um, typically 11 to 5 at the Olympia Center. Um, it, we usually let people in at like 10. We tell them if they come in any earlier, they're going to be helping us set up tables. 
um, and that happens sometimes. There's usually about 72 tablers, uh, so a lot of tablers. Um, most people get half tables, and we reserve a few tables for distros um, and libraries. Distros are basically kind of like zine stores where they sell other people's zines, so they need a little more space, so um, they pay a little bit more. Uh, tablers pay $25 for a half table, so it's really affordable um, if you exclude the travel um, expenses. A lot of people crash at people's houses and we try and kind of encourage uh, people to host and Nicole has done that before, um, I think a couple times now. Um, so if you want a, a zinester, um, visiting zinester during zine fest season, uh, let us know. People are always looking for a place to stay. Uh, tablers travel from all over the place. Uh, we've had people from Massachusetts, Vermont, Pennsylvania, Utah, Louisiana, and even Europe, um, and many more places. Those were the ones that kind of came to me off the top of my head. For the past couple of years, we've prioritized local and POC zinesters um, in an effort to amplify their voices. So they get kind of like top pick, um, and the other people have to wait. Uh, we were getting a lot of people from um, like Portland, um, Seattle, uh, California, and we love having them here, but because it is a, an Olympia zine fest, we really wanted the locals to, to get in, and a lot of times they wait till last minute and then it would be too late, they wouldn't be able to get in. So we set up a structure to kind of like prioritize those people. Um, okay. And more, um, more and more Olympia residents are tabling every year, and I think that's great. I think the fest itself sort of serves as motivation to actually finish that zine you've been wanting to do for years. Mm -hmm. And I think the more, the longer we have it, the more it will be local zinesters represented at the tabling expo. Okay, so kids table. This is an idea we had a few years ago where we try to promote ZineFest as a kid-friendly event. Um, one of the things we do for that is to uh, offer free tabling shifts to anyone under 18. It's usually a two or three hour shift and we base the amount of tables just on, how, on interest. So everyone gets to have a shift if they want to. And we've had zinesters as young as I think six that's kind of our cutoff, <laughs> but they're very popular. Um, like they get a lot of sales and other zinesters, adult zinesters love to see the next generation of zine makers. Um, so it's just one of the cool things at the tabling expo is the kids table and they rotate, like I said, it shifts. So different times of the day, different kids there. They can't, they can't sit for the whole day, 11 yeah. to 5, it's too long. So um, the other thing about the kids' table is it's free. So the yeah. kids that sign up, they get, to, they get to attend for free, and then they get to sell their zines, and they, like, make money. It's pretty exciting for them. So, um, oh, and one more thing about the youth table. Sage, who we mentioned before as one of the um, original uh, founders of the Zine Fest, does a zine camp for kids every year. She's actually been doing online zine camps during this whole time. Um, and so we, a lot of those kids that do Sage of Zine Camp come and table at the fest. Um, and they've done readings before and stuff too. It's pretty cool. So they're really cute. Okay, next slide. This is the quiet zine reading area, which if you're familiar with the Olympia Center, you can kind of see it's out by the salmon um, in the hallway. Uh, we set this table, these tables up so that because the, the zine fest can be a super overstimulating time, um, it's kind of hard to walk up to people's tables and they're sitting there and you're looking at their zines and it can be a little bit awkward, um, especially if the person that's selling their zines is shy or feels awkward kind of like interacting with people. So this gives people a way to kind of like browse the zines before they want to buy anything. Um, so we we'll go around at the beginning of the fest and we collect people's zines. This is like optional. They don't have to um, donate a copy of their zine, but they can. And if they do donate it, we write their table number on the zine. 
um, so that people can go through and look at them. And then if they like that zine, they can go straight to that table and buy it. Um, it just gives a little bit less pressure. It's also just kind of a nice uh, chill out area for people when they're feeling overstimulated. Uh, a lot of parents that come with their kids like take a minute and go out there and sit. Um, and we usually have like one volunteer that's just kind of um, sitting there and making sure everything's going okay since it's not in the actual fest. Um, and that uh, idea I think was Melanie's idea um, to have the quiet zine reading area. It's become very popular, so. Okay, next slide. Um, DJs, maybe Kelsey wants to talk about this one. <laughs> we have a DJ at the tabling expo, usually one or two. It's cool. You might recognize these two people. These are the two that tabled at our last fest. So DJ Domenica um, has has done it um, every year. Domenica um, does a um, radio show on chaos called Feel the Drive, and she plays a lot of kind of cool uh, European disco, and um, it's a really nice vibe during the fest. Um, it keeps the energy kind of high. And then um, that's Erica Lari um, in the striped shirt. She um, worked at Hot Toddy for many years and has lived in Olympia for a really long time. So, okay, next slide. Uh, workshops. The workshops are so great. The workshops are um, one of my favorite parts of the Zine Fest. This is just a few pictures from different workshops over the years. Um, we usually have uh, like between four and six workshops. We've been kind of over the years trying to figure out whether to do them on Saturday or Sunday. Um, Saturday means that the people that are tabling kind of have a hard time going to the workshops. But a lot of times if people are coming from out of town and they don't want to sleep over on Saturday, they leave. And so Sunday, we, we don't get those people. So we're sort of, we've always been kind of going back and forth on this. Um, lately, what we've been doing is having most of them on Saturdays and offering um, volunteers who will sit at um, people's tables if they want to attend a workshop. So they get to just kind of like tell the volunteer, you know, here's my stuff, here's how much it costs, and the volunteer will sit there for an hour while the tabler goes to a workshop. Um, some of my favorite workshops over the years, uh, there's a picture there um, in the middle of Suminagashi that was last year. Um, that's um, paper marbling, and our one of our former um, organizers, Naomi, did that workshop. That was super fun and popular. Uh, We've done Shrinky Dinks um, with Liz Yerby, who's a, a zinester from Portland. Um, we've done two different typewriter maintenance workshops, one with Marty Hemmen, who lives here in Olympia, and then another one with Peter Baker, who lives in Tacoma. Um, and Marty also sold typewriters, so that picture um, in the upper right is uh, all the typewriters he brought to sell, and he sold them for very, um, reasonable prices. And we've done all sorts of panel discussions. We did a panel discussion about the intersection of maps and zines. Um, we've done a panel discussion about music zines, suicide awareness and prevention, combating fat phobia, teaching with zines with some teachers. Um, and then one, one uh, workshop we had with um, Chris Sabatini, who was one of our former organizers, was called, Hey, everybody, let's create a subversive political party. I love that one. <laughs> He's a comic artist. Okay, next slide. Okay, this is a, a slide about our guests of honor. So we usually pick one person to be our guest of honor and kind of pay for them to come out to the fest, someone who normally wouldn't be able to come to the fest because they're from like out of state usually. Um, we always had one per year until this past year, we had two, that was fun. Um, so this is, I think all five of our fests so far have, are represented. The first one is V Vale, um, who is just amazing. <laughs> Um, he started the punk zine Search and Destroy in 1977. Um, 
I'll just try to get through these quickly, actually. <laughs> so, Psycho and Osa Adore of Shotgun Seamstress Zine, um, who's also a punk musician and teaching artist, uh, does ceramics, a bunch of cool stuff. Um, the third year, we had Mia King, who is a these are all zinesters, obviously, um, but she also does a great podcast called We Want the Airwaves, where she interviews queer and trans artists of color. Um, it's amazing. Um, and that was, got made into a book, too, Queer and Trans Artists of Color. There's like three volumes now. It's great. Um, the fourth year, we had Mimi Nguyen um, of the zines Slander, Race Riot, Punk Planet, She's also an associate professor of Asian American Studies and Gender and Women's Studies at University of Illinois Champaign. And then this past year, like I said, we had two awesome letterpress zinester rock stars, Hope Amico and Artness. Um, Hope is the proprietress of Gut Wrench Press and the Keep Writing Postcard Subscription Project. And Artness has been doing the Kerbloom zine uh, I think every month for about 20 years, or every other month. Yeah, so they were great. And so we have not figured out our future guests of honor. We have ideas, but that's what we've done so far. And it, it sort of is um, to bring a, a draw to the fest. They usually are involved in a workshop or two or, um, and or the reading or other event that we have. So they're kind of present throughout the weekend. Um, anything you want to say more about that, Kelsey? No, that's it. Cool. We've really, we picked really cool people, I think, personally. Oh, Osa is also a potter. We should say. Yeah, I said ceramics. Yes, sorry, missed that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next slide. Uh, featured artists. So every year we have people submit um, artwork and we pick uh, kind of an artist of the year. We uh, pay them $200 to design work for our promotional materials and merch. Um, so the first year we didn't have a contest. Uh, our former organizer, Naomi Bell, designed the, um, this, this design the first year. Um, and then every year since then, we've had, we've had this kind of contest. So um, in 2016, we had Portland artist Erica Ryer. Um, you can see her work over on the left with the animals reading zines. Uh, 2017, we had another Portland artist, Liz Yerby, who is also an organizer for the Portland Zine Symposium. She's on top with the bunnies reading zines and with the bunny with the long arm stapler. Uh, 2018, we had Kid Coyote, um, who some of you might know. Um, Kid Coyote also goes by Casey Monster and uh, is uh, one of the main organizers for Gallery Boom and is really awesome. Also in a band called Pup, right? Pup? No, what's the name? What's the Toy? name? Of their band? Toy. Yes, Toy. Toy. I got one word, yeah. yeah. And then last year, we had Jessica <laughs> Garcia. Um, who goes by Miss Jaws. So that's the, um, the runner on top of the, the head. Um, and she was living in Florida at the time, and I think she's moved since then. We never did get to meet her. Oh, the other thing about the Artists of Honor is we give them a free half table if they'd like it. So um, some people take us up on that and some people don't. So. And then this year, we're getting um, a design. Uh, it's going to be a paper cut design um, by Muriel Wheatley, who is uh, another fellow library worker, and um, her partner, Levi Greenacres. And uh, that should be interesting to do a paper cut for the first year. So, OK, next slide. OK, so merch. So the first few years, we pre-printed our merch, and we always ended up with so many extra shirts <laughs> left over that we basically ended up starting giving them away and trying to get rid of them. So we've learned our lesson, and now we just do merch on demand so people can bring a blank shirt or tote bag and screen print their own merch with the design for that year. Um, we also provide fabric if people don't have anything for to make. Um, 
So I guess we've only done that for two years. So these are the two designs we've done. We've had a volunteer help out with the whole screen printing setup. Um, usually it's been someone involved with the Space 115 Legion, which is a great space you should look up uh, if you aren't familiar with it. Um, but I guess that's it about merch. And we usually do that on Friday night too at the kickoff right. event and then um, during the day on Saturday. And it's free. It's free. People love it. Except when they forget to bring a shirt. <laughs> okay, next slide. Um, this is a couple of pictures of some of the readings we've done um, in the past. Uh, the readings are usually on Saturday night. Um, we usually try to um, pick about six readers. We usually try to prioritize uh, queer and, and zinster, queer zinsters and zinsters of color. Um, we also try and include some local folks. Uh, we, I usually kind of uh, coordinate this and I, I create like a list of people that I think would be good readers and then I share that with our guests of honor and then they kind of co-curate and, and help us pick the readers. Um, so we've done it in the past with, at, at Le Voyeur, uh, Obsidian, and then this last year we did it at Octopus. It's usually about an hour long. Um, the readings are always super diverse and, and interesting. Sometimes we pick kind of a loose theme. Uh, there's two of the posters on the right hand side there. And uh, sometimes we follow the zine with a music show. Um, we had uh, the girls sperm release party um, after the, the show, the reading on the left. Um, and that was super popular, but two totally different crowds um, attended those two events. Um, I really love the readings because it gives people a chance to kind of like read and share their work um, out loud in front of an audience and they usually get pretty good attendance and they're fun and uh, low, low pressure, except for the readers. <laughs> Next slide. Zine Brunch um, is a Sunday morning event on the Zine Fest weekend where it's very casual environment. You can just come bring any zines that you bought that weekend and just read them with other people. And we provide zines if you don't have any. Um, and we provide the donuts and coffee and other snacks. Um, people love this event. All the other events tend to be really intense, overstimulating, social. And this one is just totally relaxed and quieter and casual. And it's like, I think sometimes people forget to just hang out and connect. Um, so Sunday is like a time where you can actually come together and be like, we'll talk and hang out at Scene Brunch. It's very casual, like I said, and that's Scene Brunch. And it's usually at the Mix 96 meeting room. Which is a nice space <laughs> if you haven't been there. Okay, yeah. next one. Next slide is about library partnership. So what to say about that. So Kelsey and I both work for the Timberland Library System. Um, there's a zine collection at the Olympia branch that Kelsey started and I now maintain because Kelsey's moved over to working at the Lacey branch. Of course, she started a little zine collection there too. Um, and then in terms of the zine fest, the library like we said, is the location for the Friday night kickoff event. So that's great. Um, they also, the library will table at the Tabling Expo. That's part of their outreach efforts to spread the word about the library's zine collection and sign people up for library cards there. And people can actually check out library zines there at the fest. Um, and then the other thing is the library has a budget for buying zines for the collection. So I will go around or other library staff will go around and buy zines for the library at the fest. So that's great. And then a lot of the work for organizing zine fest can be done on work time for me because it's part of my job as the zine librarian to promote zines in the community. And this is exactly that. So it's a great kind of partnership because when things are all volunteer run, it's easy to get burnt out. So it's nice to have someone who could do it at work too. 
anything else, Kelsey, about that? How many scenes do you have in Olympia now? Oh, like 2,500 maybe. I'm at the point where I'm starting to have to remove zines to have room for new ones. Uh-huh. So if it's not circulating, it's it's getting pulled out, sadly. Um, but they, they usually get about five years, which is more than other library items. Um, yeah. And Lacey has about 500 zines, a little smaller collection. Um, we are working on some zine kits. So they're going to be like themed, um, you know, like a you know, 10 zines about food, and you check the whole kit out together. Um, we were working on that before um, this whole thing happened. So we'll see when that happens. <laughs> okay, next slide. Uh, outreach and partnerships. Uh, we do a lot of things where we kind of connect with other uh, organizations and businesses in the community. We, for many years, had a zine library at Obsidian. That's the picture in the middle when we first installed it. Um, it was just like a little reading uh, library for people that were hanging out at Obsidian. They could sit and read some zines. Um, the two pictures on the left are from our correspondence club, which we have periodically, where we hang out together and write letters. We usually um, provide stamps and we bring stationery and pens and typewriters and things like that. Um, that's really fun. And then um, over on the right, that is the Washington State Library uh, does a zine contest every year. It used to be a historical zine where people would have to submit a zine that had to do with Washington State history. This year they opened up the content so it can be about anything. Um, and that contest just closed and uh, we're usually a couple of the um, zine fest organizers help just that contest and then the winners get money and fame. Um, we've done some other things. We've done like uh, zine making um, sessions at the Hands-On Children's Museum Adult Swim event. We did a um, zine making uh, section at the Nova Middle School Innovators Art and Mark Makers Fair. And then we also uh, did the same thing at the Washington History Museum's Book Fair, which was uh, the first year they ever did that was, I think, last year. Uh, and that was fun. We got to hang out in the same area as the short run organizers and we got to talk. So, okay, next slide. See, I knew we were gonna talk for a long time. <laughs> Yeah, in the interest of time, I'll just glaze through fundraising. Um, initially, we needed a lot more funding, and now we have like a healthy cushion, so we don't do as many fundraisers anymore. But a couple of cool things we did was a zine maze, which is exactly what it sounds like <laughs> at Gallery uh, Boom, which was a whole event too. I can't really read the fine print, but it's there. Uh, we did. Reading. Yeah, lots of readings and shows, happy hours, secret cafe, talent show. And um, we always have a raffle at the fest, which is a big money maker. Um, the thing we do now that makes the most money is in our program for the weekend, have hand drawn um, advertisements that local businesses will pay like $50 to $100 for. That is the best, easiest money maker. So that's what we go with more than the events were just a lot of effort for a little bit of money. So they were fun, but now we don't have to do them as much, which is cool. But There's so much work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll move on to the next thing, which is the last thing, which is the future. Uh, so the date change. So we, we um, this last year, um, did a poll uh, and kind of we, we had been thinking about moving the time of the Zine Fest. Um, we've had it traditionally in October and we picked that for a number of reasons, um, including the fact that school was back in session and we wanted to um, kind of work with Evergreen and SPSCC. Um, that hasn't really panned out that well because school starts kind of late in September and then the zine fest happens in october so um 
and the weather is always a little mm. um, there's lots of other zine fests that happen kind of in the fall around our area so we did a poll and we ended up deciding to move the fest to may um, so uh so our next big zine fest is going to be um on may 15th to the 17th 2021 um we also kind of we have like a, a buddy fest the portland zine symposium and they do theirs usually in july so it kind of um having them a little bit closer together works well and then next slide Okay, so since everyone now is used to having it be every October, we felt sad skipping a whole year. So we decided to do sort of a mini fest this October, not at our regular space um, at the Olympia Center, but at the library um, during on a Sunday. So the library will be closed and we'll kind of take over the whole space at the Olympia Timberland Library. Um, we're hoping this is still a thing that can happen. Hopefully we'll find out soon because we kind of have to start planning it. Um, but yeah, we hope to have our mini fest at the library. And I think it's October 18th. Oh. Does yeah. someone have a question? Oh. And now it's time for questions. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> um, so I'm still stuck on the difference, Stephanie. <laughs> Hey, Kelsey, <laughs> my neighbor. My How neighbor. are you? Um, I'm still stuck on the, the question between zines and comics. So is it fair that a zine can be a comic, but a comic can't be a zine? That's a good question. It, the the, the um, dividing line is pretty slender. I would say if it's self-published, um, and it's not like usually when we when we think about zines, we think of them not being like, you know, kind of slickly produced, uh, glossy paper, you know, published um, by like a, a larger um, company or, or a business. Um, zines are usually not created for profit. Um, they're usually pre created for pleasure. Um, so like... Uh, you know there are comic there are comic scenes like here's do you guys know freddie dobler this is what yes, he's on the arts oh, commission yes, right he now. Is. so this is this is technically a i would say this is a comic scene uh, you know it's self-published um small print runs made on a photocopier um and it's i would say yeah of, like bound Yes. That's one of the key signs. It's either yes. stapled or kind of hand sewn instead of like a bound with glue situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a book. Yes. Yeah, okay, <laughs> got it. Good. Oh, and then I have a second question. May I have two questions? Did that answer? Yes. Yeah, but did that answer your first question? It did answer my it's first very question. Very ambiguous. Uh, no, I get it now. I get the, the handmade versus the mass produced. Yes. Um, the second question is then, you, the Timberland Library has a zine collection. How was that related then to Evergreen's collection? That's handmade books. It's so, mm -hmm. such a slippery slope, y'all. <laughs> Aggie, you wanna take a crack at this one? Um, I'll try. I'm not as familiar with Evergreen's collection. I know the person who kind of maintains it, Liza. Um, but I don't think there's really a connection there between the two collections. Um, our collection is a circulating one, so people can check zines out mm. and take them home. I believe Evergreens just kind of read in the library is one main difference. They also tend to have, I think they have older zines, like 90s classic zines. And most of ours are uh, contemporary and ephemeral, mm. kind of here today, gone tomorrow, not an archive. This is like all letter pressed by hand right. every other month. This is a lot of work. Um, and so I would say this is close to an artist book, but it's also a zine. So who knows? <laughs> it's a fine line. I, yeah, I encourage people who haven't checked out the library collection to, to once we reopen, oh God, at some point, probably in May, um, you can go check out 
a, the huge variety of zines. They're also actually in the catalog at the library's website. So you can search the word zine and then some other keyword and, and the zines will come up in that category, ideally. And you can click place hold and then they would all be on the hold shelf for you to pick up if you come into the library. It's one idea. Also, Aggie and I really like to suggest zines, so we can we can do readers yeah. advisory or zeners advisory for you if you are looking for zines on a certain topic or you have a certain aesthetic interest. Um, we love doing that, so hit us up. Oh, does someone have a question? Just yeah. shout it out. I do. Okay. Um, so I was trying to get my son, 15 year old, to come and watch earlier, so I may have missed it. But is there a is there a historical development? Um, I'm guessing it all started maybe from college rags and stuff. But um, do you can you develop can do, if can you develop on that on how like the history of zines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of depends on your definition of who like what the first zine was. Sometimes I think like Ben Franklin made zines, but you know, <laughs> some people credit uh, in the 19, like 50s, science fiction writers communicated with each other through zines about their niche interests. And it's always been a kind of a place for people with niche interests to find each other. The interesting, well, what does Kelsey say about history of zines before I go on? I would say there's also like a mail component. There's usually yeah, like the culture does a lot of like mailing back and forth of things. Um, and so like the, the fanzines, the sci-fi fanzines um, came out of a need for people. We didn't have the internet then and they needed a way to communicate with each other. So they'd mail each other, um, you know, fan fiction and like uh, it, it, it uh, usually had a lot to do with, with mailing stuff back and forth too. Um, yeah. They say, uh, what is it, common sense? Is that Thomas Paine? Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. They talk about that as like uh, yeah, uh, originally yeah. published as kind of like a, uh, you know, a zine, sort of like yeah. a manifesto. So, yeah. But yeah and of course, they, they had a huge, you know, surge in the 90s with Riot Girl and, and other kind of punk groups, um, especially in Olympia, which is wild that there's just hasn't been a zine fest in Olympia until we started one. Because <laughs> people are always like, oh, they're doing a zine fest again. I'm like, no, this is the first time. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's I think it's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think that? it's interesting that zines um, survived the internet. Like a lot of people thought the internet would just take the place of what zines were doing before the internet. Um, so I think it's really cool that they not only survived, but there's sort of a resurgence now in the last five or ten years, as you can tell by the new zine fest popping up. Um, and more and more libraries have zine collections. So it's actually, despite the internet being one way to connect people, people still like this sort of hands-on ephemeral way to connect and find community and get their voice heard. This has been completely fascinating. Thank you. And oh, I'm going to open my eyes up to a whole world that I didn't even know existed. And I was wondering, do you, can you recommend um, a book that explains like the whole history of zines and, and, and actually just talks about the, um, the zine culture in its entirety? Mm -hmm. um, the, one of the books that's kind of considered like the you know the book that sort of talks about zines and how to make zines and all of that is called Stolen Sharpie Revolution. Um, it's written by Alex Reck, who lives in Portland and one of and was one of the organizers for many many years of the Portland Zine Symposium. Um, and she's releasing a, a new edition of that book right now, and it's going to be um, hard a hardcover for the first time. So yeah, Stolen Sharpie Revolution. Um, for kids, there's a really good book called What You Mean, What's a Zine? Um, that's kind of written for like tweens and, and teens. Um, that's been out of print for a long time. I, I don't know if the library still has it, but. We do. Uh, we do, okay. For now. Yeah, for now. But that, 
Good. But yeah, those are the two I would recommend as well. Um, and actually, V Vale, the um, our guest of honor for the first year, he has a um, publishing house called Research Publications, and he released two books um, about zines as well. Um, just kind of like interviewing different zine creators. Um, those are good too. I think it's just called Zines and Zines Two. <laughs> zines exclamation point! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And there are other books too. But definitely start with Stolen Sharpie Revolution. It's small, bite-sized kind of pages too, so it's it's nice. Right, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right, well we're at about noon. So thanks so much everyone for coming. Thank you so much. Um, Kelsey and Agatha. Agatha. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. our pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, and please do get in touch if you would like to share something that you do as well. So let's hear it for his organ. Everyone's on mute. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank Have you a good so rest of your day, everyone. Yeah, come and see us at the library. <laughs> <laughs>